Reckless's story in the Korean War is that uh, they bought this horse at a race park in, in Seoul and turned it into a combat enabler. Lieutenant Eric Pedersen was the man who purchased Reckless for $250. And he was the commanding officer of the recoilless rifle platoon. They decided to put her through hoof camp, which was the equine version of boot camp. We hear about on-the-job training. This was the epitome of it. Literally, this horse was trained to lie down under fire to protect itself, to know it knew how to avoid obstacles and barbed wire. And truly, after just a couple of show and tell on the fly routes, the horse would do it by herself. They would take her up and down the hills to get her used to carrying the pack saddle and the ammunition on her back. These canisters of ammo were very large, and before Reckless came along, the men had to pack this themselves. The camaraderie between Reckless and her men was something special. She was the only animal in camp, and so the Marines became her herd, and she would follow them anywhere and everywhere. She would even sleep in their tents at night. She would follow them into the mess tent and eat breakfast and had bacon and eggs. Even after a battle, she would have a beer with the guys. The, the, the fact that Marines could depend on the horse to do the resupply routes, uh, that means it wasn't just a horse to them. It was, it was somebody that they were in the fight with. What started the battle for the Nevada cities is at seven o'clock at night, um, 3,000 enemy soldiers descended upon three outposts in this area. Reckless's men were guarding outpost Vegas. They, of course, were overrun, and so Reckless's uh, mission began that next morning. Uh, started loitering over six rounds at a time. Uh, by the middle of the day, she was up to eight rounds at a time. She knew what her job was, she knew where her men were, and she would go up to the guns by herself. There are stories of uh, up to 50 times in one operation that she ran a supply route by herself. That frees up Marines for combat and for other things. So I, I believe that that's the most impressive part about the horse. She carried 386 rounds of recoilless rifle ammunition. That's over 9,000 pounds on her back. Incoming fire was so fierce that the men couldn't hear themselves talk. And Reckless was in the middle of all of this. Under artillery fire and mortar fire, she continued to do her resupply mission uh, for the Marines. And, and especially having been wounded twice, and that not having deterred her to continue to do her mission through the end of the war, is, it, it's really astounding. They had a ceremony sending her off in October of 1954 is when she left Korea. She was the guest of honor of the Marine Corps Ball that was at the Marines Memorial Club in San Francisco. And she waltzes through the lobby and gets in an elevator and goes up to the 11th floor, sashays out of the elevator into the ballroom. She <laughs> spied the anniversary cake over on the table and before the guys could get a hold of her, she was up to her nostrils in it. And then after that, she moved over to Camp Pendleton. At Camp Pendleton, while Reckless was there, the Commandant of the Marine Corps promoted her. There was a 19-gun salute in his honor, and a parade of 1,700 troops walked by to salute her. She had three Colts, uh, and she had a filly. Sadly, the filly died at a month old. Unfortunately, all the Colts were gelded, so there is no bloodline for her. Her story just kind of disappeared from the pages of history. And what's interesting is she was as famous as Lassie and Rin Tin Tin in her day. She was an iconic hero. And when she died, her story made the front page news in, in newspapers across the country. And she was buried with full military honors. I, I first came to light on the story of Reckless in the, at the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia, where a statue by uh, the same artist who did the statue that's behind us was erected uh, to honor this great mayor. I think Staff Sergeant Reckless's uh, legacy is going to be that the courage and the dependability that she showed in combat made her truly what the saying is, not just a horse, but a Marine.